Thank you very much for that introduction. All right, this thing's working, huh? That's beautiful. <laughs> so we are here tonight to celebrate mobility. Hooray, mobility. Now, we're not talking about mobility that you get from your car to get here or a plane that I took to get here or even, you know, having an upwardly mobile career path. We're talking about the underappreciated joy of self-propulsion, the ability to move yourself from point A to point B, all under your own power. Now, this is something that a lot of us, well, all of us really, take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis. But it is something that over 100 million people across the planet do not get to appreciate. Over 100 million people are, are disabled across the planet. They need different mobility devices, and they, they don't have access to them um, due to, to certain restrictions of environment or, or cost. Free Wheelchair Mission, however, has tackled that. And they have helped already over 127, or 627,000 people enjoy a wheelchair, enjoy a little taste of mobility. That's amazing, right? Now, mobility is something that I can never take for granted for too long. Uh, for, for a variety of reasons. Um, just recently, actually, I started working for a startup company out of the University of Illinois that makes mobility devices. So every day I go into work and we talk about mobility devices, so it's kind of hard to forget about it in that sense. Uh, but also, as you can see, I'm in a wheelchair. And you know, if you're, if you're living in a wheelchair, you can only go so long before mobility kind of sneaks up, taps you on the shoulder and says, hey, what about me? and flattens your tire. And you gotta go through the rest of the day on a flat tire because you forgot to bring a spare tube and you don't have a spare tire. And you're going through the rest of the day with up at a little slant with one tire down low and the other tire up high. Or, you know, it starts raining outside and all of a sudden your front casters decide to lock up and you go to turn and one of the casters doesn't want to turn with you. Or, you know, being from Illinois and not from Southern California, you get snow. That snow is that, that white stuff that falls from the sky in, in winter, real winter. <laughs> and when that happens, you know, all of a sudden you're pushing and you hit a patch of ice or you hit a patch of snow and you're not going anywhere. And you're pushing and you're not going anywhere and that's mobility saying, hey, hey how's it going? <laughs> Along with that, I have chosen a career path as an athlete. And so mobility to me has become a little bit more than just getting from point A to point B, but being able to get from point A to point B the fastest. And sometimes it works out really well. And I actually have a clip here. I was in the Beijing Paralympic Games in 2008, and uh, I was fortunate enough to win a gold medal in the 100 meters. A uh, real quick, straight, short race. And I have a, I'll show you a video in a second here of that race. As it queues up, I have to warn you, it is a, a British feed, and so they're actually focusing on the, the athlete that fortunately took second place to me. <laughs> that guy right there, but. <laughs> It does, yeah. We'll get it queued up in a in a second here. So here's the here's the race as you can see. I have the red bandana in the middle of the track. So that's, but that's, that's what I do, and when it works out like that, then it's, it's amazing, and it's great, and everything is, feels wonderful, but nine times out of ten, uh, you, you don't win. Um, you, you know, that's always the goal, but when in most races, when you have, uh, you have an issue here, an issue there, or, uh, you know, there's just some, some better competitors. You know, I'll, 
I, I don't win every race I'm in, unfortunately. It would be nice if I did. But when that happens, it's again mobility coming and saying, ha ha, you, you didn't do it fast enough. Um, and that's when you go back and you talk to your coach and you pound your head against the wall and you say, what did I do wrong? Um, but I am, I am very fortunate to be in the situation that I am where I have always had the opportunity to be mobile. Um, and I've always been, I've been given uh, the, the mindset to take advantage of that by my parents. When I was, uh, well, I was born happy, healthy, you know, normal kid. I was able to walk, I was able to jump around, run around, jump on my bed, um, get into all kinds of mischief. Uh, but one day in 1988, a beautiful day in May, um, my life sort of changed quite drastically. Uh, I had just gotten back from a birthday party of a friend of mine, and my parents had sent me to my bedroom to take a nap. I had a one-year-old brother. Uh, I still have a brother, no longer one. But my parents, were, my parents were in the kitchen feeding my brother, and I was in my bedroom with the door closed, supposed to be taking a nap. And of course, I don't know if any of you have young children, um, how often do they actually do what they're supposed to do, right? Yeah. Um, so I was not taking a nap, and I wanted to play with a toy that was on a shelf uh, in my bedroom. And the shelf was too high. I couldn't reach it from where I was standing. So I decided that, you know, since I couldn't ask my parents to grab the toy because I was actually supposed to be sleeping and not playing, I would climb up onto my bed, climb from my bed to the window, the windowsill of the bedroom, which is about four or five inches wide. Uh, it's something that I had done before. Um, and so I wanted to... I climbed up onto the windowsill and started shuffling across over to the bookshelf on the far side of the window. And when I was halfway across the windowsill, I got, you know, I got a little tired or something happened and I decided I needed to lean backwards and rest. And what I, I thought I was leaning back on the window, I leaned back on the screen of the window and the building used pop-out screens. So the screen popped out and then I popped out and I fell 12 stories. We were in a high-rise apartment outside of Washington, D.C. And so I fell 12 stories, and what they think happened is that they think I hit the side of the building and flipped over and somehow landed straight up and down on my feet in these short little bushes uh, next to the building. So I landed on my feet, broke my femurs, dislocated my hips, broke a bunch of ribs, punctured both my lungs, and the swelling, um, the swelling around the, all the injuries actually caused a paralysis in my spinal cord. So I was, all of a sudden, you know, go from this happy, healthy, bouncing boy to uh, thoracic 6-7 level of spinal cord injury, which that is right around chest level, uh, chest level, I guess, is, is the level of injury. So I can't use any muscles below my chest. And now my parents, I mean, this, for me, I, I was four years old. I, I had no idea what was going on. I'm in the hospital, but my parents, the young parents having their kid just go through this, I can't even imagine what they were thinking or what they were feeling. And then, you know, the doctor comes and tells them that, you know, we're sorry, your son is going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. You know, they, they had no experience with people with disabilities, with physical disabilities at all. They didn't know anybody in a wheelchair. They didn't really have any clue about that world and what that consisted of. And what's amazing is, to me is how they just naturally knew the right thing to do. I mean, they had two paths they could have taken. 